Thank you. So are you guys teed up, ready? Okay. Thank you for having us here tonight. Yes, ma'am. And if we need to give you a minute, I guess we could. We just got kind of a healthy agenda tonight. We can, we could dive into that if y'all need a minute. Y'all need a minute? Okay. Well, well, we'll just go ahead and, and step through the agenda while they're getting this uh, getting this ready. Um, first item is going to be a public hearing for proposed rezone, uh, plus or minus nine acres located on Highway 72 from R11 to B2. You want to talk to us about that one, please, man? Yes, sir. So this property is directly east of the Midtown Center where the Publix is. The majority... Matt, can you speak up just a little, yes, please? Sir. Sorry about that. The um, frontage along this property already has the B2 zoning on it. It's the back side of the property that has R11. So they're looking to rezone the whole thing to B2 in order to develop it for a commercial retail use. Um, staff does not have any issues with this, and the Planning Commission did recommend approval. Okay, I'm fine with it. Does anybody have any questions about it? I'm, I'm good. Okay, uh, who will take this ordinance? I'll take. Here. And I guess we will have to suspend rules for the ordinance. Who will take the rules? Okay. Okay, the next one, Matt, is public hearing for almost 14 acres located at Athens Limestone Lane, Athens Limestone Boulevard. This is the opposite direction, B2 to R2. You want to talk to us about that one? Yes, sir. The applicant's proposing to rezone this property from B2 to R2 in order to develop it for some luxury apartments. Uh, this is the property that's directly behind the international, the IHOP. I don't think yeah. they're calling it International House of Pancakes anymore, but it's directly behind that. Uh, it is adjacent to B2 on the west and the south, and obviously the east along I-65. Um, this is a kind of a step down in intensity with the potential commercial that could go on this site. It is proposing a different type of apartment unit than we've seen within the city limits. It's going to be more on the higher end. A lot of one-bedroom apartments. The majority of the units will be one bedroom. They're proposing a substantial amount of open space. It's got the courtyard design. I don't know if you all have seen these over in Madison in Huntsville, but they're getting pretty popular. Um, staff is rec recommending approval of this one. They have submitted a traffic study, so we've looked at the traffic counts out here and what it could be. And, you know, if this is approved for rezoning, they'll have to go through a site plan review as well. But the Planning Commission did recommend approval of this as well. That's directly behind what now? IHOP. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about that one? Who will take that ordinance? Uh, we'll have a public hearing on it, and you can ask. Who will uh, do it? We'll do it. Rules have to be. Suspended. Yeah, the rules. Who will do the rules? I will. We'll do it. Okay. All right, Matt. You're the man of the hour here. Uh, public hearing number three is 35 acres on West Market and Lucas from R12 to R13. Uh, within the corporate city limits of the city of Athens. You want to talk to us about that one? Yes, sir. So this property is on the east side of Lucas Ferry Road. You go to the next slide, Holly. Actually, a couple more. There you go. And they're proposing to rezone from R12 to R13 to develop this property for detached single-family homes. Um, they have submitted a layout plan that's going to be going to Planning Commission tomorrow, and, of course, that's all contingent upon the rezoning being approved tonight. But with the layout plan, they're showing a 70-foot wide lot product. So it, it's definitely not the typical R13 you've been seeing over on the east side of town. It's much larger. And the minimum lot size is around 9,000 square foot. So it's comparable to what's surrounding it. Around it. Yep. And we've got some apartments there on the northeast corner, townhomes next to that. So it's kind of just a transition in densities as you go to the west. Um, staff's recommending approval on this one. And the Planning Commission met about a month ago and also recommended approval. Okay. 
Does anybody have questions on this one? The question is, which one of our districts, it's not mine, whose district is this? This is um, Mrs. Henry's district. And yours, Dana? <laughs> you okay with this? R3? I have had anybody uh, specifically be upset about it. I've had questions, but I, I haven't really had anybody contact me so far. So, so far, I've never broken other than just general questions about all three. Okay. Setback requirements, you know, we changed and made that where. Can you go back to the picture where it showed the townhouses or apartments, I believe? That's a different one. That was our two, yeah. yeah. That was number two. Okay. I like the looks of that. That was the luxury apartment he yeah. referred to. So no questions on item three or item 11C. Does uh, does anybody who, who will take that ordinance? You want to take it, then? Okay. Who will do the rules suspension on that? I will. Okay. Item four is a public hearing for rezoning two acres at on Cambridge uh, from B two to R one one. I'm sorry, B2 and R11 to an institutional district? Yes, sir. Uh, this property is currently split zone. It's got B2 on it and an R11 zoning district. Uh, the applicant's proposing to rezone to an institutional district so they can develop this two acres into a, a church in yeah. the future. This is a journey church. Um, but like I said, property is surrounded by B2 to the north, going out to 72, but it does have some estate and R11 zoning out there as well. So this is cleaning up the zoning so they can develop it in the future it will also go through site plan review and really the required parking is going to limit the amount of seating for the church so you won't have a mega church out here or anything like that it will have to meet our parking requirements and they'll also have to do some landscape buffers around the outside of it but uh, staff is recommending approval on this one and the planning commission also ruled unanimously to recommend approval okay i have got a question what, what can you explain just refresh my memory mm -hmm. about uh, a B2 to an, uh, the institutional district. Yes, sir. So the institutional district allows for low, in, low institutional uses and medium institutional uses. Those are what churches fall under. So the higher the intensity, the more seats you can have. Um, the B2 only allows for the low institutional use. So that's why they're kind of in the middle between the low and the medium with the amount of seats they want to put in. So that's why they're having to request the rezoning to institutional. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions about that? Okay, who will take that one? I'll take it. You will? Yeah. Okay, the, and what about the rule suspension? Okay. Okay, that's all of our public hearing slash rezoning requests. We want to move on to our consent calendar. Item A is a resolution to purchase 52 guardian shoulder lights uh, for the police department, and that is budgeted correctly. Uh, it's, I think it's budgeted. Yes. Part of their capital plan. Yes, sir. Do you may have any questions on that one? It's pretty straightforward. Okay. Item B is a resolution to set a public hearing for the meeting on March 14th to potentially de-annex uh, a piece of property that's currently zoned R11. So we'll deal with that one on at the public hearing. Item C is also a resolution to set a public hearing uh, for that same meeting on March 14th to review the request of Dilatina Development to rezone 88 acres. Uh, and that's down near Hatfield Lake. We can deal with that one on that night as well. It's just set in the public hearing. And then finally, D uh, is a resolution to approve the purchase of an equipment trailer from Better Built Trailers uh, for the street department. And that's a budgeted item. I don't yes, really have any questions about that. Do you guys have any questions on any of those? Okay. Who will take that consent calendar? Okay. 
All right, item E is an ordinance renewing a franchise for Knology, a cable TV system. Uh, Shane, you normally, there's not much to new here. E and F are sort of the same kind of thing. They're both uh, franchise extensions for, uh, for Knology and then also for Charter. Okay. On the same terms, no changes. All right. Does anybody have any questions on those? Okay, who will take the knowledge, the item E? Okay, what about item F? Same deal, it's just spectrum. You'll do that They'll one too? They'll have to have rules suspension too. He's doing E. Rules on both of those? Okay, who will do rules on E? What about item F? Did you do that one, the rules on that one, Harold? Which one? Item F. Spend the rules? Yeah. Yes, I will. Yes, yeah, she's doing the rules. You've got the ordinance. Item G is a resolution approving the electric department's amended policy to make service available to customers. You guys, uh, Blair or Shane, who's going to talk to us about that one? Uh, the last time this policy was updated was around 2002, and uh, at that time we made provisions to allow developers to provide their own labor to install the facilities, electric facilities on the developments. Uh, the modification we're looking to make tonight is to add another provision that would allow the developers to purchase ma and provide materials for those developments. Okay. And we just inspect it then, and that would be the only difference? Yes, yes, we would, uh, we would have to approve the uh, specs on the materials before you know, they would purchase, but it would give them a provision to allow them to purchase it. So Where? I'm assuming they're happy about it, right? This gives them a little more freedom? It gives a little mo bit more okay. flexibility, yes, sir. Well, when I read that, I wonder, what about you're extending the services? Yes. Approving the amendment policy to make the service available. Then what happens after you make it available? You go back in and service it when you need to? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Once it's installed, of course, we own and maintain it, but we'll go back in, replace anything as it fails or uh, reaches its end of life. Okay. I guess any warranties transfer and all that right. sort of thing to you? Yes, sir. Okay. I mean, it makes sense to me. Does anybody have any questions on it? Okay, who will take item G? Thank Thanks, Blair. Who, will... who took it? Uh, Dana. Item H is a resolution concerning the use of coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds. We talked about this one at the last meeting. This is uh, formalizing some of that. Does anybody have any questions on that one? Shane, do you want to fill in any blanks on that one? There was a final rule on the COVID funds issued by the Department of Treasury in January 22, and it requires that for one of the categories that the city make an election, uh, and this is after Annette has reviewed the numbers, this is the most favorable election the city can make. It does. This resolution in and of itself doesn't spend any money. It just makes that election within one of these use categories. Process basically. Yeah. Well, the ten million dollars that's been provided, how is that divvied up? What that's, it does? That's not our amount of money we've gotten, right? That's right. Just the a city. Threshold. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a threshold number. The, basically, there's one category. Y'all remember that presentation we did with those different categories of uses for that COVID money? One of the categories is the to the extent of your loss of revenue during the COVID pandemic whatever that amount would be, you could spend up to a certain amount for governmental services. It's one of the categories. So each municipality had to calculate what its loss was within that category. In the final rule that came out a month ago, the Treasury said, you know what, that formula is very complicated and for some small cities it's just not workable, so you can just say it was $10 million. 
And so that's, that's what this resolution would do. Athens would essentially say, we're going to use that 10 million number. That does not mean that you're spending 10 million in this category. It just means you've made an election. So when you do spend in that category, if you wanted, you could spend up to that amount, which actually I think Athens COVID funds was less than 10 million. So about just a little less than six and a, and a half, just, right. just shy of six and a half million. All right, which is why, again, I stress to say this isn't spending any money. It's just yeah. checking one of the two boxes that the government gives you to check. What and I it, was wondering, though, is you talk about loss of revenue to the city. Yes, sir. I'm just going to pick a store at random. Let's just say uh, Village Pizza. Okay, during the COVID, they probably had less people coming in to spend money. And I'm just using them as example only. So how would we know what the loss of revenue is. The government issued a pretty complicated formula where you looked at your different sales tax revenues during a particular series of time, and you calculated that against what a national average would have been, what they thought it would have been had there not been a pandemic, and then you tried to measure out, but based on those factors, what type of loss you had, but you're right. It was, I mean, it's not a very, it's not so scientific that it really gets down to it. The government just issued a formula and they said, well, we think this formula worked. Annette ran the numbers on the formula and it is more advantageous for the city to just take the standard allowance because it gives you a greater amount of money to spend under this category. Okay, sure like to get the whole 10 million. Be nice. Who will take that one? Okay, item I is um, a resolution concerning replacing network switches. Um, you guys, Dale, this is one you've talked to us about, I think, but you may have any questions on that one? By nine network switches. No, Dale did a good job in yeah. Annette when we had our meeting, so all my questions have been answered. Okay. We'll take that. Uh, we'll take that one. I'll take. It. That is a suspend the rules or no? For I and J, we'll need to suspend the rules okay. on both of those. Who will do the rules on I? I will. You will. Item J um, is is the are the Wi-Fi uh, things at the sportsplex. Seven of those. They're at end of life, right? They they're kind of beat up. So we're replacing those. And these are this is from COVID monies as well. You may have any questions on that one. Nope. Okay, who will take that one? I'll do it. And there's a rule suspension as well. Okay. Item K is a resolution um, requesting approval to execute a consultant agreement with CSL Services. To do flow monitoring in our collection system. Jimmy, did you want to? Does anybody have any questions for Jimmy on this one? It's basically a study. Right. Any questions? He's talked to us about it one other time. Okay. I don't have any questions. Who will? Who will take that one? Is that one rule suspension as well, Annette? Or? I think that one's only partially budgeted, isn't it, Jimmy? It's a little bit over the yeah. original. We probably need to suspend okay. the rules. Who will do that? I'll do it. Okay. Item L is a resolution requesting a change order to a contract we have with Russo Construction. Uh, it's for $97,000. You may have questions on that one. We've already approved a certain amount, and this is a change order of that amount. This is $97,000 addition? Yeah, that's the change order. Whoa. I've had my questions answered. Does anybody else have any questions on it? Who took that? Uh, well, if no questions, I'll. Who, who would like to take it? I'll take it. You'll take it? We need the rules suspended on that one. I'll do that one too. You'll do it? Okay. 
Item N is a resolution to adopt a revised org chart for IT department to add an additional system support specialist. Uh, you talked to us about that one as well, Dale, or you or Marsha maybe, is Marsha here? I don't see her, okay. Do you want to speak to us? I know you spoke to some of us one-on-one -on -one about it. Yeah, this is just a response to the amount of work that we've uh, increased over the past few years as we've added more systems, more devices, and we've just had a hard time keeping up. So this is adding another, basically a generalist support position to handle everything that we got going on. Yep, and he had projected it, so. This one is in the budget. Yes, sir. we yep. put it in the budget yep. when we do the budget work. You may have any further questions on that? N or M? M. Mary. Mary. I'll do it. And that, does that require rules? It doesn't. We actually included okay. that in the 2022 budget. Okay. All right, item N is a resolution to add uh, positions. Uh, one is a record retention clerk and a civil engineer to public works. Same thing, right? This one is... M is Harper. Is there anything that... James, I think you projected this as well, right? So... Yeah, does anybody have any questions? We talked about it way back during budget time, but... Okay. Who will take that one? I'll take it. All right, and then uh, item O is to uh, adopt the job descriptions for those two jobs. So it's just a process. Who will take that one? Mm, I'll do it. We don't need to do that until uh, any rules until the next one is a, an actual ordinance to add those positions to the public works department. So who will take that ordinance? And we'll need to do a rule suspension there, correct? Who will do that rule suspension? I'll do it. Okay, item Q is a resolution authorizing uh, Public Works to issue a TAC or, uh, task order uh, to do some additional striping on five streets. You may have questions on that one. Okay, who will take that? I'll take it. No rule suspension on that? We will. We do? Okay. Mm -hmm. Who will do the rules on that one? All right, and item R is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into agreement with the state of Alabama. Um, and, and this is to do some of the roadway lighting at 251 and Lindsay Lane. Wish I could take this one, but who will take this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is one I get asked about a lot. Yeah, who will take this? I'll do it. Yeah. Please vote it. Please vote it in. <laughs> Does that require rule suspension or no? I don't believe so. Okay. We're adding an item S that is the paving resolution that we got today. It is a healthy paving list that... Uh, Hopefully everybody will be excited to see. And it's pretty well uh, apportioned throughout districts, but it's uh, four and a half million dollars in paving. I'm, I'm assuming that's the largest we've ever done. It is. It's grown every year, so we're lucky as a city to be able to do this. Um, I think the first year I was on council, we might have done a half a million dollars. So this is nine times that. Um, we definitely are paving at a rapid pace, but everybody's seen this, and I think everybody's good to vote on it. So, would uh, who would take this one? I'll take it. You will, and then we'll have to definitely. do rules. Who will do the rules suspension? Okay. All right, and that's it for the regular business. I know that took a little longer than we had thought it would, but see, there's nothing else to add. Correct. The one from. Uh, the one from the solid waste in the brief week. Is it tonight or is it? Okay. All right. Uh, you guys. You guys are up.
Thank you again for having sure. us here tonight. My name is Gail Bajeron, and I'm the Vice President of Athens Arts League. We've been in existence since 2006. We put on seven successful and consecutive art festivals those first seven years. We've renovated an historical, inside historical area called High Cotton Arts, where we had earned $40,000 to do that. So we had to earn that money to make that happen, of course. Uh, seven years, this past seven years, we've been, in, been around for 14 now. This past seven years, we've had 10 uh, studios for at, at really affordable prices for uh, local artists. And in addition to that, that space has been used for art camps and also music events. And following the needs of the community, we knew we needed more space because they've been very popular. So we saw a scout house, and that scout house space looked like you could handle a recording studio and a recording lab for the students, or a student lab. And so we're always trying to combine the visual arts with the musical arts. It's all the arts, but those two in specifically. How we did that, how we went through that, got that renovation going over at Scout House is through several grants. Uh, those grants were funded by DECO, Steelcase, Muscle Shoals National Histo uh, Heritage Associate, or excuse me, Arts Area, excuse me, through legis the legislator, through Eagle Scout projects, and through concerts. The concerts were a great opportunity for students to learn how to put on a concert and how to get involved in the music industry. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get people to look forward, the students to look forward, to become educated, to get a job. And so that's what we're looking for. We're always wanting to educate. Um, and so the pandemic stopped a lot of that. So we're kind of stuck. And we've tried to move forward. Um, and we're here now. And I'm going to turn this over to someone who's gonna tell you what's happening right now uh, and where we're going. And that's our wonderful, enthusiastic president, Garth Lovern. I don't know about wonderful. Enthusiastic, <laughs> yes. I wanna thank the council, mayor, and uh, everyone here with the city for having us today. Uh, right now, it's, it's no secret, Athens and Limestone County are in a state of rapid, a, a very rapid and progressive time right now. Um, I work somewhere between the housing industry and between the banking industry, so I see this firsthand, and I want to let you know that I appreciate what you're doing. It's no small part due to the work of the council, of the city government, our county governments, and everybody who is working for these things. As we've seen in the slides prior to me walking up here, all of the new subdivisions and and things that are getting turned over to businesses and, and housing. And with that said, I just want to uh, let you know that the Athens Arts League, uh, one, of the, one of the most well-meaning groups of people that I've ever been involved with, uh, we want to be a part of this conversation going forward as well. Uh, we are a board that is, that is highly motivated and highly energized uh, to get things done. Uh, I've never seen a group of people come together so well and use their time, their talents, and their money to put projects together and to put things together that, that benefit the uh, city's overall um, cultural status. I would use the word vibe, but we're at a city council meeting. Um, <clears throat> and uh, just to let you know where we are right now, uh, the Scout House the exterior is pretty well taken care of. The siding, it's been painted. Uh, the roof is good. Uh, there were some structural issues that had to be taken care of uh, when Bert, uh, Bert Bradford was kind of heading up the project for a little while. He took care of a lot of that. And now we are to the interior. And if anybody knows anything about housing or buildings, you know that the interior is where the rubber really meets the road. So what we've got left is we've got to get sheetrock on, we've got to get flooring, it's got to be painted, 
and we've got to finish out the plumbing and the electrical. And with those things taken care of, we should be good to go to open up the main floor for business. Um, there is a bottom floor, but we're not quite concerned with that just yet. We want to get this thing operational, and then we will proceed with that area. Uh, we do have, uh, we have had some, some funding partners who have stepped in. Uh, you can see the, the slides there right above the uh, kids with the drums. That's me, and that is uh, Brendan Andrews standing there in front of the fireplace inside the scout house. He is with the Duke Renewable Energy Corporation out of North Carolina, and they granted us some money uh, just a few months ago. So he was in town on some business working with the county commission, and I decided to give him a tour of our building. And they are really behind it. Uh, we have also worked with, uh, we've received some contributions from First Metro Bank, Serve Pro, um, CDPA, at the time it was CDPA, I guess, or Malden and Jenkins now, uh, and the Wheeler Basin Society of Accountants. Uh, they have all contributed money along with a lot of just individual private donors. And I must say that not only do we see, receive contributions from different businesses and people around town, we also contribute money ourselves. So, uh, and uh, what we're uh, working towards right now, uh, we are going to be putting together different programs and trying to, to figure out, um, you know, these things that are going with it. Currently, we have just received uh, a grant through the Trail Foundation. Are you, you may be aware of that. It's a local, it's a local foundation, and they they grant money to sort of help uh, with with projects like what we're about to take on, which is called a drum circle. Now you see the young people there uh, with the the drums. Uh, those aren't actually children from Athens. We have that's a photo probably taken from the internet, but it is um, exemplary of where we want to try to go. What this is. This is, it is what it sounds like. It's a drum circle. It's where you take a group of people. In this particular case, it will be um, young people, probably seven to nine years old or so. And uh, what our plan is, because we've brought uh, John Deemer onto our board of directors, and uh, he also put together the uh, presentation that you're looking at up there. He works with the Athens High School Band. He is an assistant to their band director, uh, Ty Parker. And um, he has, uh, I think one of the things that, that we're gonna try to get into is we're actually gonna try to use band students as mentors for the young people that we wanna bring into this. Now, I'm not saying necessarily that that will be a, an incubator for the drum line moving into middle school, but into the high school, but then again, it may be. Uh, time will only tell. Now, um, a couple of months ago, uh, Councilman Wells and uh, Mayor Marks, uh, y'all had a, a visit with uh, some of our uh, board members, and uh, they came to basically present what we're presenting to you right now. Yeah. And, and I think at the time, the request was for about 55000 or so, and uh, the request at this time is uh, 60000 and I just wanted you to know that the, the the reason that that has changed is because we've just factored in inflation, which we all know is an issue right now. So when that number comes up, I just wanted you to be aware of, of what you were looking at and why. Um, with that said, I am going to uh, turn this over to our uh, other representative. This is Jim McDowell. He's also on our board of directors. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, City Council, thank you for having us, Lucas especially Lance. on this uh, Valentine's evening, so happy Valentine's. Um, yeah, so the point of this place, um, here I have a, a place to play, learn, perform, and inspire. Um, I, I'm not going to take up a lot of time, but uh, just to give my perspective on this is I'm a musician. I've been a musician pretty much all my life. Um, a lot of these people you see up here um, are my age, um, Mike Anderson. Brittany Howard, they um, came from a uh, succession of musicians that does not exist anymore. So there is not a existence of a musical inspiration locally 
that would contribute to these kids to be inspired and to grow up to, you know, whether it's their passion to be a, a performer or they want to learn the technical aspects or the business side of things. So we want to give them a place to be able to come and express themselves and to be able to learn. Um, we've met with um, Ty Parker, the band director, and he's interested in having a program where students would come and actually learn how to do all that stuff as part of a curriculum. So that's the educational aspect, also working with the um, music program at Calhoun as well, because there's a rather talented um, director there. So um, in terms of keeping the doors open, um, right now really the only overhead we're going to have other than maintenance is utilities, including internet. So in terms of um, bringing that funds in, we're planning on having what they call basement concerts, but not in the basement. So we'll have bands come play or artists um, once or twice a month, depending on you know the time of year. Um, at the same time, having music um, teachers be able to hold lessons, so it'll be a space for them to do that. Um, and then seminars and anything music related and even visual art related as well. So that's it. Any questions? Yes. Please. Oh, first of all, I got two or three questions, Jill. Yes, sir. First of all, you spoke about the grants. Have y'all satisfied the grants, or is any of them matching? No, sir. They are not. None of them's matching. Not matching. Okay. As far as satisfying them, I mean, we've we've got to get the doors open. Right. Like steel case, they've give they gave us thirty thousand dollars, and so to purchase equipment for the lab. So we have professional equipment. I mean, stuff that you'd see in Muscle Shoals. So we have very, yeah. very good stuff. Uh, the other two spoke of renovations now starting on the inside, sheet rocking and stuff like that. Most people that we give an appropriation to, they turn in that we require, the council requires a financial statement be sent to our city clerk. Mm -hmm. Have y'all done that? I haven't seen one. I need to see one. Can that, is that forthcoming? Okay, I need it to go to our city clerk and then she'll distribute it to us. But I need to see that. Because I think after talking with our council president today, probably in two weeks this will be voted on, around the 28th. Yes, sir. I want to see that before I vote. Okay. And also, just out of the top of my head, we talk about concerts. Now that's a residential neighborhood you're talking about out there. Is this gonna interfere with the neighbors? I mean, that's maybe trying to sleep and stuff like that. I mean, have you discussed those things? Have you really discussed them where you will know that you ain't bothering the neighbors because that's right there with them? Well, fortunately, Dan Havely does live right across one street. Now I'm not sure about the others, but, um, we do plan on adding um, material to the building to do sound dampening. So that should be a pretty big reduction. Not only that, we're not going to be holding 10, 11 o'clock concerts either. So. Okay. Jim, those things are important to me. Sure. And I'd also like to tell you or them, I'd like to be able to come one day for a visit before Please. we vote. I want to see the inside and outside of it. Okay. Absolutely. And I want, to, I want to do that. We'll get that set up. Do that too. I sure do. Well, thank That's you. it, Jim, for me. Any other questions? Because I do, I, I do plan to bring it to a vote uh, in two weeks. Uh, this is something I've agreed with the mission of for, I don't remember when you guys started this. It's been several years now. It's been a, a being worked on. And uh, I live a couple of blocks from it. Um, and I've kind of seen the progression of it through the years, and so would love to see it finished and, uh, and using it for its intended purpose. So you guys, yeah, try to get any questions you've got answered. I'll do the same. If I've got any further questions, we'll ask you. We appreciate the, uh, the update, and uh, hopefully we can get it done.
Well, just basically the financial report, uh, and Ed can explain it better than me, Garth, but basically just uh, where the money, how much money you've taken in, how it's been spent, and how much money you've got now in your account. We'd like to see that before we make the sizable contributions that you're asking for. We'll do it in the meeting, during the meeting, okay. at 5.30. Okay. Yeah, from the outside, it looks like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. No, nope, sounds great. Any other questions before we take a real abbreviated break here? All right, thank you. All right, we're going to take about uh, five minutes and start at 545.
we can go ahead and get started here. Please take your seats. We'll try to get you guys out of here at a timely hour since it's Valentine's. You're spending it with us. My girl's got to take a stand. Yeah. I didn't bring anybody flowers in here. Uh, Annette, if you don't mind calling us to order. Okay. Mr. Wales. Okay. Mr. Travis is out. Mrs. Henry. Here. Mr. Harper. Here. And Mr. Seibert. Here. Four present, one absent. And I would just say, uh, you mentioned uh, Frank Travis. Just please uh, continue to pray for him. I would I would say he's uh, he's dealing with a lot, and we're all very concerned. And just continue to keep him and his family in your prayers. That's uh, I know he would appreciate that. Okay. Uh, our invocation will be offered offered by Councilman Wales, and then Pledge of Allegiance by Mayor Marks. Will you bow with me, please? Dear Heavenly Father, first let me thank you for allowing us to gather here today. Thank you for the many gracious blessings that you have given to us, Father. I pray for our mayor and all the various levels of our city officials and all the people who have gathered here tonight. Father, be with us now as we conduct our city business. Open our hearts and our minds and give us the wisdom we need to conduct the business that affects our residents. These things I ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that, Councilman Wales, Mayor Marks. Next, we have the approval of the City Council minutes and the work session minutes. I'll ask for a motion on that. So moved. Second. Would you call the roll, please, on that, Annette? Mr. Harper? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. We don't have any special City Council minutes or standing or special committees, so we'll go to the report of officers, Mayor Marks. Yeah, uh, Councilman Seibert, thank you. I just want to give a shout out to our Athens High School cheerleaders and what they did in Orlando at a national competition. Uh, Danny, you may help me with this, but I think they finished second in three categories, which is pretty amazing. And that's pretty first class to be from Athens, Alabama at a national convention. They took a big crowd there. And I tell you, the energy level of these young people even if it's music or this other competition, it's on fire in Athens and we need to be supportive of it. So I really appreciate that. The other thing I wanted to give you an update on, uh, many of you have received phone calls and so have we received a lot of phone calls and that's received a lot over the past two or three months on late payments of utilities and charges that were late that people said that they made their uh, payment on time. I want you to know that Regina, Blair, uh, Kent, Annette, and I have been working on this for a good while, particularly the last couple of weeks. We have found that there is a variety of things that needs to be cleaned up. Uh, I won't go into all the details of it. I'd be glad to sit one-on-one -on -one with you if you'd like to. We think we have got a majority of this cleaned up. It's a banking issue along with a, a post office issue and mailing checks instead of having electronic downloads of payments. Uh, you wouldn't think that or dream that in this day and time, but that's what had been happening. But I want you to know that we're working on it. Please tell the people that called you that we're working on it and we'll keep you updated as much as we can with that. Uh, I want to give a shout out to all the guys I mean, to Regina and the rest of the people that have worked through this. We had problems with the kiosk machine. We had a problem with a mail-in check to Birmingham that's on your bill. If you send it in, it's a mail that sends your check to Birmingham, which then was picked up by an armored car and taken to Atlanta and downloaded and sent a check back to us, which is almost the craziest thing I've ever heard of. So we've got that hopefully resolved with electronic payments and we're working through it and uh, 
again, if you want to meet and talk about any details, we'll be happy to do so. We're aware of the problems, and I said to our group, regardless of who, where that issue lands, it's our problem. It's the city of Athens. It's our, we're at the front of this, and it's bad press, and it needs to be fixed, and we're working on it. So I wanted you to know that. And that's all I have, Mr. Salvat. Thank you. Shane, city attorney, did you? Nothing from me, Mr. President. Nothing from you? Mr. Wales? Uh, all I've got, I just, I just want to wish all the ladies especially, and the guys too, a happy Valentine's Day. I know i got to get out of here tonight and go do that, go do that thing myself. So anyway, happy Valentine. Ms. Henry? <laughs> <laughs> You can't follow that, can you? <laughs> We're not going to ask you more questions about that. <laughs> Mr. Harper? I just have one thing. I like, Mr. Black, I'd like to see you after the meeting. I Absolutely, have a question Chief. for you. Yes, sir. That's all I have. Uh, I would echo the mayor's comments about our cheerleaders. Uh, we sent four, I think, four squads, and they uh, finished as high as second. Three of them did, so pretty big deal, and I think I'll – reach out to them and ask them to come maybe to the next meeting and be recognized. But um, they put in a lot of hard work. Uh, I know some of those, quite a few of those girls with my, that are friends with my sons, and uh, they definitely are very deserving of that. Uh, and with that, I don't have anything, I don't have anything else, so we'll jump into our public hearings. Uh, the first one is a public hearing for the proposed rezone of plus or minus nine acres located at 22201 U.S. Highway 72 from R11 and B2 to uh, B2, just within corporate limits of the city of Athens. So I'll open the public hearing. Matt? Yes, sir, Matt Davidson, city planner. Uh, the applicant is proposing to rezone this property in its entirety to B2 general business. As you can see by the map on the screen, the portion that fronts on 72 already has B2 zoning on it, so they're looking to rezone the entire property so they can develop it for future commercial use. Um, the Planning Commission met back in December on this one and recommended approval of this unanimously, and staff is also recommending approval. All right. We've already heard from Matt. Is there, uh, we asked all questions of him. Does, does anybody else that'd like to speak on this? For? Anybody against? Okay. Public hearing is closed. Mr. Wales. Mr. President, now therefore be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Athens, Alabama, as following. An order to rezone plus or minus nine acres located at 22201 U.S. Highway 72 from R11 Low Density Single Family Residential District and B2 General Business District to a B2 General Business District within the corporate limits of the City of Athens, Alabama. Move to suspend the rules. Second on that rules. Would you please call the roll on the rules, please, in that? Mr. Harper? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. And Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. Can okay, we get a second on Mr. Wales' ordinance? I'll second that. Okay. Would you please call roll on that, in that? Mm -hmm. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. Second public hearing is a public hearing for the proposed rezone of 13.96 acres of property located at intersection to Athens Limestone Lane and Athens Limestone Boulevard from B2 to R2 and to adopt the master development plan within the corporate limits of the city of Athens for center point crossing. Matt, I'll open the public hearing. Yes, sir. The applicant is proposing to rezone this property, which is directly behind the IHOP over on Athens Limestone Boulevard. Uh, they're wanting to develop the property for some luxury apartments. Um, the R2 zoning is approved to a master development plan, which the applicant has provided. You can go to the next slide. Holly. Uh, maybe one more. That shows the zoning of this, so you can see the B2 surrounding this property. This is in a commercial area of the city, very close to I-65 and Highway 72. Um, this is a courtyard-style apartment complex, which we haven't seen it yet within the city, but it's really popular over in Huntsville and Madison. Um, the applicant's proposing 256 total apartments, with the majority of those being one bedroom. There will be some two-bedroom and three-bedroom units as well. Um, they are proposing to provide over 25% of the site towards open space, which will include several different amenities, 
pool, cabana, dog parks. It's going to be a really nice development. Um, the applicant has provided a traffic study of which engineering has evaluated and determined that the intersections out there will be able to function at an acceptable level of service at build out. Planning Commission met back in December and voted unanimously to recommend approval of this development. Um, we see this as almost of a down zoning, being that this is B2 right now and it allows several different commercial uses. So even though the apartments that are being proposed are relatively intense as far as the density that's being proposed, you know, it is less intense than what could be out there. And with the close proximity to the commercial, hopefully it'll provide a very walkable community. That'll be a plus for the city. So staff is recommending approval. Anybody have any further questions for Matt? Okay. Uh, come on up. If, just state your uh, name and your address, please. Samir Darji. Address is 1693 Autumn Chase here in Athens. Question which I have is um, at some point I had spoken with Mayor Marks and my father had it, and there was going to be at some point a connection between this side of 72, which is proposed on this, on this master plan, and Forest Street. How does this development affect that long-term plan? Can you speak to that, Matt, Mayor? The theory doesn't affect it at all. We still have plans to extend the road on the west side here up through to Forest Street. So this will add, a, this and the property to the north will connect to that. We'll have better connectivity. Is that your only question, Mr. Dorji? Yes. Okay. Anybody else would like to speak on behalf of this or against it? Okay. Public hearing is closed. Councilman Harper. Be ordained by the City Council of the City of Athens, Alabama, an ordinance to rezone 13.96 acres of property uh, located at the intersection of Athens Limestone Lane and Athens Limestone Boulevard from B2 General Business to R2 Multifamily Residential District and to adopt the master development plan within the corporate limits of the city of Athens, Alabama. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. Matt, would you please call the roll on the rule suspension? Mm -hmm. Mr. Wales. Mr. Wales? Yeah, oh, yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. Okay, can we get a second to Councilman Harper's ordinance? Second. All right, would you please call the roll on that as well on that? Mm -hmm. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. Item three is a public hearing for the proposed rezone of 35.21 acres located at West Market and Lucas Ferry from R12 to R13 within the corporate limits of the city of Athens, Alabama. So we'll open the public hearing. Matt? Yes, sir. This property, like you said, is located on the east side of Lucas Ferry Road and just south of Market Street. The applicant's proposing to rezone from R12 to R13 in order to develop the property as a detached single family subdivision. Um, we do have a layout plan that's under staff review right now that's going to be going to the Planning Commission tomorrow night, contingent, of course, upon approval of this rezone. But with that layout plan, they're proposing 83 lots, which based on the acreage is relatively low density still. It's about two and a half dwelling units per acre. And they're also proposing a minimum lot width of 70 feet. So this is actually closer to an R12 development. However, the setbacks are a little bit less with R13, so they're able to get bigger homes on the lot, which is the reason for the request. Um, the Planning Commission did vote unanimously to ap recommend approval of this, and staff is also recommending approval. Any questions of Matt? I think we got them answered in the work session, but okay. Thanks, Matt. Does anybody else would like to speak on this? Either for or against? Okay. Public hearing is closed. Councilwoman Henry. <clears throat> now, therefore, be ordained by the City Council of the City of Athens, Alabama, as follows to rezone plus or minus 35.21 acres, property located at West Market Street and Lucas Ferry Road, from R12 medium density single family residential district to R13 high density single family residential district within the corporate limits of the City of Athens, Alabama. Motion to spend the rules. All right, can we get a roll call on the rule suspension, please? Mr. Wales? Yes. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. And a second, please, for Councilwoman Henry. Second. 
Right, can we get a roll call on that, please? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mr. Cyber? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. All right, item four, public hearing number four, is a public hearing for the proposed rezone of two acres of property located at 14286 and 14302 Cambridge Lane, lots five and six of the Athens East subdivision from B2 and R11 to institutional within the corporate limits of the city of Athens, and this is for Journey Church. Uh, we'll open the public hearing. Matt? Yes, sir, the applicant is proposing to rezone this property to an institutional zoning, which will allow for the development of the church. Um, if this rezone is approved, it will be going through a site plan review, which will make sure that all the minimum standards are met. Um, Planning Commission met back in December on this and voted unanimously to recommend approval, and staff is also <coughs> recommending approval. Thank you. Anybody else would like to speak on this? Bill? Bill Perkins, 17459 East Moore Street, Athens. And I'm the lead pastor at Journey Church. We are currently meeting on the east side of town on Bradford Road in Lindsay Lane Christian Academy School Building, which is nice, but it's not our home yet. So we approached Chris Wood and Amanda Kaufman about purchasing those two, acre, those two one acre lots uh, contingent upon it being rezoned by the city for our use and with your approval tonight we'll move forward with building a five to six thousand square foot building that meets all of the city requirements thank you very much thanks Bill do you have any questions for him <coughs> any other comments all right well, that public hearing is closed councilman Wales Mr. President, now therefore be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Athens, Alabama, in order to rezone plus or minus two acres of property located at 14286 and 14302 Cambridge Lane, lots five and six of the Athens East subdivision from B2 General Business District and R11 Low Density Single Family Residential District to Institutional District within the corporate limits of the City of Alabama. Athens, Alabama. Move to suspend the rules. Second. All right, can we get a roll call on that, please, mm -hmm. and then on the rule suspension? Mm -hmm. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. And a second to the ordinance, please. Second. All right, can we get a roll call on that as well? Mr. Wales? Yes. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. All right, so that concludes the public hearings. We didn't say no to the church. That's probably a good idea. Thank you, Bill. Next portion of our meeting is a reading of petitions, applications, complaints, appeals. This is anyone in the audience's opportunity that'd like to come in, uh, forth and address the council. This is your opportunity to do that. You'll have three minutes, and please just state your name and address. So if you've got something, please come on up. My name is Janice Woodruff, and I wanted to thank you all for paving over uh, on Wright Street and Brown Ferry Street. Okay. Uh, but on Brown Ferry Street, for a long time, I've been intending to come up here and ask for a gate, a, sa a safety gate or a bridge. There's a, a sidewalk on Brown Ferry Street, and it starts like right where you're sitting. Mm -hmm. And if you walk to there, it's a, there's a 10-foot drop with a concrete drain, big drain. And in the summertime, if you're not familiar with that drop-off, there may be grass growing up. Mm. People that are familiar with it, they know that you have to stop right there and come across the street to connect and go on down because there's, there's nothing but a ditch all the way down. And it's dangerous if somebody walks off of that and fall 10 feet down and hit that concrete down in there. So I was wanting to see if you could get some help with putting something up there okay. to let people know that the sidewalk is not going any further than this. Okay. And, um, uh, 818 Aiken Hill, we own uh, some property house. And there's a lot 
right beside it. The people that own it live in Ohio somewhere, uh, and it needs to be cleaned off. Uh, we're trying to help beautify the community and make it safe, but people come and park because it's dark and wooded right mm -hmm. there beside that house, and there's all kinds of garbage and everything's thrown out, and there's people living there, but the people that come there don't live up in there. They just come up in there because it's a dark, wooded right. area, and I don't know how to go about getting the people that own that lot, since they don't live here, about getting it cleaned off because uh, the people, a lot of the people in the community want to see it look better, but if you have people that don't live in it, they don't have to put up with all that right. stuff that's going on. Now, we have a process. The mayor, if you give him the address, the one you're, the one you're talking about that's messed up, and we can get that, you know, get I, it. I think I pretty much know the area you're talking about. And the guardrail for the for the sidewalk there you're talking about, the new section of sidewalk between Hind Street and, and out Ferry. to Highway 72, out that way. It's uh, Brown Ferry Street is going. Yes, ma'am, about 100 yards. And I got you. And the uh, sidewalk is, is yeah. going to I know where you're talking about. Just a bit. Yeah, I know we. Like yeah, we'll. I'll take a picture. We'll. We'll try to follow up with it. Okay. okay. And there's people, men out there working already, putting new sidewalks down uh, at uh, Higgins Park. Yes, ma'am. Down there. Right. And uh, so maybe they they can just put that up in there while they're already over there. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, yes, ma'am. Ma Thanks for thank bringing you. it to us. And you have the address of the, I the do. lot. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but it's right beside 818 Acorn Hill Circle. I got you. Okay. Right I got it. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. I'll check it out. Thank you. Anybody else have anything? Okay. We'll move into our regular business, the consent calendar. Councilwoman Henry. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Athens, Alabama to purchase 52 guardian shoulder lights with white front, yellow, and blue back for a cost of $4,108 from Dana Safety. Funding for this purchase will be from the Police Department's existing capital expenditure, expenditure account. No connection, by the way. Um, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Athens, Alabama to set a public hearing for the regular meeting at 5.30 p.m. on March 14, 2022, to review the request to de-annex plus or minus 8.85 acres of property located on the west side of Mooresville Road, south of Newby Road, zoned R11 Low Density Single Family Residential Zoning District. Be it resolved to set a public hearing for the regular meeting at 5.30 p.m. on March 14, 2022. 22, to review the request of Dilatana Development Corporation, Lakewood, to rezone plus or minus 88.29 acres located on the east side of U.S. Highway 31, south of Hatfield Road, Hatfield Lake Road, from R11 Low Density Single Family Residential Zoning to R12 Medium Density Single Family Residential Zoning. No additional lots are proposed. And be it resolved to approve the purchase of an equipment trailer from Better Built Trailers with an amount not to exceed $7,500 and to be funded from the existing capital budget of the street department. Second. Second. We get a roll call please on that. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. And Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. Item E, Councilman Harper. <laughs> be ordained by the City Council of the City of Athens, Alabama, that uh, ordinance renewing the non-exclusive non franchise to Knowledge Incorporated. We get a rule suspension on that, please. I move to suspend. And a second. Second. Okay. Would you please call the roll on that? Mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Now. Henry. Yes. Mr. Wales. Yes. Mr. Harper. Yes. Mr. Seibert. Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. And then a second for the ordinance, please. A second, please. 
All right, can we get a roll call on that one? Mm -hmm. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. Item F, Councilman Harper. It was ordained by the City Council of the City of Athens, Alabama, an ordinance, ordinance extending a non-exclusive franchise to Spectrum Southeast. We get the rule suspension. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. Second. Uh, please call roll on the rule suspension then. Okay. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. And then a second for the uh, ordinance, please. Second. All right, can we get a roll call on that? Mm -hmm. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Cyber? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. Uh, item G, Councilwoman Henry. Therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Athens, Alabama, on February 14th, 2022, at 5.30 p.m., that the City of Athens Utilities Electric Department's policy to make service available to customers attached hereto as attachment A is approved. Second. All right, can we get a roll call on that, please? Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. Item H, Councilman Harper. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Athens, Alabama, that the city elects to use the standard allowance of $10 million as provided for in 31 CFR of the final rule for purposes of determining the city's revenue loss with respect to the coronavirus, state and local. We get a second, please. Second. All right, can we call the roll on that one and that? Mm -hmm. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. Item I, Councilman Wales. Therefore, be it or resolve of the City Council of the City of Athens, Alabama, the mayor is to authorize to cause the city to purchase nine network switches uh, related item for C Spire for a total cost of $67,721.19. Move to submit the rules. You get a second on that? Net, would you please call the roll on the rules? Mm -hmm. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mr. Cyber? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. And we need a second to the resolution. I'll second. All right. We get a roll call on that as well. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mrs. Henry? <coughs> Mr. Cyber? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. Item J, Councilman Harper. It is resolved by the City Council of the City of Athens, Alabama, that the mayor is authorized to cause the city to purchase seven wireless access points related to uh, from C Spire at a cost of $11,370.14. Funds in support of this resolution are authorized to be expended from the city's allocation of coronavirus state and local physical recovery funds. Moved to suspend the rules. Second. All right. We get a roll call on the rule suspension, please. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. And a second to that resolution, please. Second. All right. Let's just call the roll on the resolution. Mm -hmm. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. And I would just add, that's two uses of our COVID money that has uh, allowed us to, with good planning from Dale, to allow us to uh, upgrade our infrastructure that hopefully everyone will be able to appreciate, especially at the ball fields and uh, different spots around, the, around town. So good for that. Uh, item K, Councilwoman Henry. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Athens, Alabama, that the camp Council authorizes the amount of $101,300 to be funded from the Water Services Department operating budget and cash reserves for CSL Services Incorporated to perform flow monitoring assistance in the wastewater collection system for 12 months. And the Water Services Department Director for and on behalf of the City of Athens is authorized to enter into a Master Services Agreement with CSL Services Incorporated to complete this work. Move to suspend the rules. 
Second. Right. Can we get a roll call on the rules, please, Annette? Mm -hmm. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. And a second to the resolution, please. I'll second. Okay. Can we get a roll call on that as well, Annette? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. Item L, Councilman Wales. Okay. <clears throat> Therefore, be it resolved by the City Council, City of Athens, Alabama, it is made on February the 14th, 2022, that the Council authorizes a change order three and an additive change order in the amount of $97,035.94 for the Swan Creek trunk lines phase two line replacement contract with Russo Construction, increasing the contract amount for $1,412,566.96 to $1,509,602.90, and the mayor, for the behalf of the city of Athens, is authorized to execute the change order. Move to suspend the rule. Second. All right, can we get a roll call on the rule suspension, please? Mm -hmm. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. And then a second to the resolution, please. Second. All right, can we get a roll call on that? Mm -hmm. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. Item M, Councilman Harper. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Athens, Alabama to adopt the attached revised organizational chart for the Information Technology Department to add one additional system support specialist. All right, can we get a second for that? Second. All right, and a roll call, please, Annette. Mm -hmm. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mrs. Henry? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. Item N, Councilman Wales. Mr. President, be resolved by the City Council, City of Athens, Alabama, to add following positions to the Public Works Department organization chart. Records retention clerk, grade 10, a civil engineer, grade 21 and 22. All right, we get a second on that. Second. And a roll call, please, Annette. Okay. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. Item O, Councilman Harper. Be resolved by the City Council of Athens, Alabama to adopt the following job descriptions for the Public Works Department. Records retention clerk, grade 10, and civil engineer, grade 21, 22. All right, can we get a second on that? Second. Uh, would you please call roll on that? Mm -hmm. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. Item P, Councilwoman Henry. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Athens, Alabama, that ordinance number 888, establishing a classification list for classified and unclassified employees, is hereby amended as a follows, effective 2-14-2022. Add the job, following job titles to the list of classified positions for the Public Works Department. One, Records Retention Clerk, Grade 10. To civil engineer, grade 21. Move to suspend the rules. Second. We get a roll call on the rules, please. Mm -hmm. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. And a second, please, to the ordinance. I'll second. Okay. We get a roll call on the ordinance, please. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. Item Q, Councilman Wales. Mr. President, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Athens, Alabama, to authorize Public Works to issue a task order from the Batemius Mix Plant Mix Paving Contract, the Capital Infrastructure Fund, to restripe the following streets: Edgewood Road, from Elm to the airport, Indian Trace, Lindsay Lane to Pike Road, Schilling Street. Washington to U.S. 72, Browns Ferry, city limits to U.S. 72, Old Decatur Road from Book Hill Drive to U.S. 72, $15,000. All right, 
We had a motion to suspend the rules. Uh, motion to suspend. Second. All right. Can we get a roll call on the rules suspension, please? Mm -hmm. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. And a second, please, to the resolution. Second. second. Okay. We call the roll on that, please, now. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. Item R, Councilman Harper. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Athens, Alabama to authorize the mayor to enter into an agreement with the State of Alabama acting by and through the Alabama Department of Transportation for the maintenance and operation of roadway lighting at the intersection of Alabama 251 and Lindsay Lane in the City of Athens. We get a second. Second, but I got a question. Uh, is this is this to be paid for out of the state funds since they're building the since they're making improvements? I think that's going to be our portion because it's at the roundabout area, and that's the lighting to kick this off and hopefully get this thing opened up in the next couple of weeks. And James, I believe that's hundred percent our funding. Is that right? Yeah. It's a payment plan for doing it. Okay. okay. Any other questions on that one? All right. Would you please call the roll on that? Mm -hmm. Mr. Harper? Yes. Mr. Wales? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. Uh, item S, Councilman Wales. This is quite lengthy here, y'all. Be it resolved, Mr. President, be it resolved by the City Council, City of Athens, Alabama, to direct the mayor to issue a task order to the construction and paving of street and roads listed below. Uh, I won't go any further with that explanation, but I'm going to list some of these streets in case you don't know. Longview, Nello Way, Palmer Street, Sunrise Drive, Jefferson to Washington, Lucas Street, Newby Road, Chickasaw, Hastings Road, city portion only. Forest Street, Jefferson to Houston, Houston Street, Browns Ferry to 72, North Madison to Washington and Hobbs. Goes on and on, I hope you'll bear with it. Trace, Trace Trail, Oakdale Avenue, Clara Street, Clifford Street, Tower Street, Workerson Drive, Elkton Road, Shawnee Lane, Cherokee, Summit Lakes, Brookmead Avenue, Hollidale Drive, Edward Street, Lillian, Hobbs Street, Railroad to East Cloverleaf, Moyers Road, Manawa, Mohawk, Pryor from Elkton to 31, Wheeler and Plum Street. Uh, Lindsay Lane Widening, Indian Trace to Indian to East Strain Road, Lindsay Lane Widening, north from Huntsville Browns Ferry, 1,000 feet. Huntsville Browns Ferry, Lindsay Lane, the Bucky's Boulevard signal. I have a question about that last Absolutely. May yeah, I ask Go you? ahead. The, the Lindsay Lane to Bucky's Boulevard signal. Yeah. The new street that's going in at the south end of, of Lindsay Lane. Right. Is that, is, that, is that straight our cost or Bucky's? Oh, it's absolutely ours. Bucky's looked at the front entrance way, but to pick up the street to open up additional retail opportunities goes all the way to the back of that, Mr. Wells. Okay. And we bid that, we bid, those last three we've got there, we bid those and we had low bid, but it's all rolled into this total cost. I'm gonna close with saying, I'm, I'm told this is gonna be around $4,000, all these streets. Never. Four million. Four million, I'm yes, sorry, about four, four million. 4.6, I believe. The city of Athens has never, ever had that kind of paving money. I'm proud of this. Yeah. Sure, right. Yeah, we're very fortunate to be in this position to pave this many streets at once. So 
Does anybody else have any questions? Uh, everybody's good? No, you need to be here. Okay. Uh, we get a, a motion to suspend the rules, please, Dana. Motion to suspend. Second. We get a second. Second. Can you please call the roll on that? Mm -hmm. no. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Wales? Mr. Wales? Yes. Mr. Yes. Harper? Yes. Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. And then a second to the amendment, uh, to the resolution? Second. All right, would you please yes, call the roll on that announcement? So Mr. Wales? Yes. Mrs. Henry? Yes. Mr. Harper? Yes. And Mr. Seibert? Yes. Four yeas, zero nays. All right, great. Uh, are there any other items of business? Okay. With that, we will adjourn. Thank you. Oh. Good job, Chris.